Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Michelle Williams, and I'm here to present uh, Giving Thanks and Its Benefit to Your Health um, for our webinar today. So thank you so much for joining us. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about gratitude, right? So one of the biggest things that I think is kind of out there in our mental health and how we manage our stress is understanding how to not only show and uh, show gratitude, but also how to uh, accept gratitude and kind of make it part of your overall life. Gratitude as a concept, right, is an expression of appreciation, of course, right? We all know that. It's the recognition of a value or of something that we find important in our lives that we appreciate. It is at, the, at its core what's called a social emotion, which means that it is only expressed in a, a, comp a social component of some sort. So you express gratitude to other people, other people express gratitude to you, and it, and it runs very deep as far as how we, um, we think that human beings um, evolved over time because we see, you know, uh, people working together in, you know, cave drawings and things like that from, you know, thousands of years ago. Um, there's a lot of different psychological professors that sort of focus on this area of science. Um, Robert Emmons is one of the, I would say, top people. Um, there's quite a few of them, actually, if you're ever so interested. But, um, you know, he talks about two key components uh, of practicing gratitude. So we're trying to do it better in our own lives. So the first thing is that we need to affirm and understand what things we are grateful for. Uh, so, you know, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, as we move forward. But the second part of it is acknowledging the role that other people play in the in our lives of things that we're grateful for. So understanding, of course, that in most cases we don't do anything completely on our own. We lean on the, the activities of some other people and you know, maybe businesses or, or even government and religion that, that give us something that has made our lives better for which we are grateful. So showing gratitude can sort of help us deal with toxic emotions. Many times we are strapped down with things like chronic stress, high anger, disappointment, unfulfillment, etc. And gratitude can help sort of, you know, not take away those emotions, but they can help make it feel uh, better and, and that there's a positive outcome to those experiences. In, in you know, the field of psychology, they will often say, you know, no feelings are wrong, feelings are feelings. Uh, and also most feelings have a purpose. And if we allow ourselves to feel them and we allow ourselves to process through those emotions, then we feel better overall. And then that's, you know, part of how gratitude and the study of gratitude kind of connect to those psychological components. In general, we know that gratitude has uh, a, a, a lot to do with how we manage our stress, and it's an emotion that's predominantly felt or, or you know, created in our limbic system, which is our emotional center of our brain. Uh, and that same part of our brain is also dealing with learning and decision making. And so if you think about that together, if, you're, if you practice gratitude, you tend to also learn, you know, if you're grateful for your ability to learn or grateful for your ability to make a good decision, then those things kind of all get connected and it can make us feel a little less stressed and maybe uh, have, have lower levels of some of the negative emotions that we might have. Um, in general, if we practice gratitude and the people around us practice gratitude, of course, that creates more of a climate of positivity and a little bit less negativity. Um, I know that for, for myself personally, when I started thinking about how to practice gratitude better for myself, that I, I would, you know, feel like, you know, it's like, oh, I, I say thank you and, or to people or I wave people, I, I wave to people when they, you know, let me into traffic. Or if I let somebody into traffic, do they wave to me? It's a, you know, so it's sort of something you start to begin to notice. And when you feel like people aren't grateful for for some of the contributions that you've made, it can make you feel disappointed and unfulfilled and angry and, and all of these other types of things. So it really does play a pretty big role in our lives, even if we don't think about it often. Um, the, the process itself is about recognizing what you have versus what you don't, right? A lot of times I think we sort of focus on the, I wish I had this, or I, I'm supposed to have that, or I should have done this. 
and, and that sort of sets us up in, in sort of a, a more of a negative uh, component. So if we can recognize all of the things that we have and, 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 and then apply what positive outcomes have been connected to those things, that gives us a, a, an external way to, um, to create better outcomes for ourselves. Okay, so typically uh, at this point, I would say to everybody, you know, hey, take a small piece of paper out. It doesn't have to be right now, but at some point, write down three things that you're grateful for. Uh, and, and, you know, they talk a lot about gratitude journals and how that can minimize your stress and things like that. And, you know, and I think sometimes we're like, oh, it's another thing I have to do. So I don't think you have to write it down on paper. But if you can kind of say to yourself, you know, today I was really grateful for X, right? So today I did an event uh, with my team and uh, I had two new team members and they did a great job. And, and for that, I'm really grateful, right? And I'm also grateful right now because I'm having to ride, uh, take a ride while we do this webinar uh, because of a family emergency of one of my team members. And I'm grateful that I have internet and I'm able to do that, right? So there's there's all of these different ways that we can make our lives better. And, and when we can when we can recognize those things and then we can use those as, as sort of our, our go-to for the day, that helps us, I think, display more uh, positivity overall in our lives. <clears throat> so for me, when I think about what I'm generally grateful for, I have a disabled mother. She's been in a wheelchair since I was in high school. So I'm grateful every day that I, I can walk as far as I want and I can do what I need for myself and I don't need anyone to help me. Um, I also get to work in my dream job every day. So um, that's something that probably only 20, 20 or 30 percent of people have. And lastly, I'm very grateful that both of my children are happy kids and they both are, um, you know, healthy in, in all the ways that they need to be. And they're, you know, they, they you know, they don't get in trouble at school and, and so on and so forth. And those three things together every day make my life better. Um, and, you know, sometimes we have one of those things, sometimes we have all of them, but recognizing them and talking about what you're grateful for can really help displace some of the things that can get us down. Like if we pay attention to a lot of social media or the news, it's sometimes more often than not a lot of negative things, right? And so if we're constantly looking at those things, that can make us feel like very stressed and like, oh, everyone's bad and the world's going to end and all, you know, all these terrible things. And so having those things that you're grateful for, like at the top of your mind can really help uh, lower some of those negative responses. So there's a whole science about gratitude, but because we're on limited time, um, I'm not going to show this video because I have one other one that I want you to see. But if you ever have a chance to type into YouTube the amazing effects of gratitude and you see really it's a short three minute video, but I think it's really great. Um, additionally, we do a lot of science. Like I mentioned at the beginning with the professor, um, there's lots of research studies talking about the benefits, both physically and mentally, for practicing gratitude. So, first and foremost, it enhances our well being. So, it makes us feel better uh, overall. It also increases our optimism, which you know, can sometimes be hard because sometimes life seems overwhelming. It's like we can't afford uh, our retirement and we, uh, we we have to work longer than we would like and we always have a to-do list. And, you know, so uh, sometimes our focus can change and that can lower our level of optimism. And so if we practice gratefulness, then we sort of remind ourselves every day that we do, even though these things are happening, we have all of this other stuff that, that can help us feel better and, and make us realize that, you know, life can be pretty good. Uh, it also increases, it's been connected to increasing people's total mental health, but specifically their level of joy um, and life satisfaction and happiness overall. So, so those things are really important because when we do studies uh, and surveys and we say to people, you know, we ask them the 10 to 30 questions that assess life, life satisfaction, um, people who score lower on life satisfaction also score lower on uh, their level of gratefulness or, or how often they practice gratitude. And so there's a lot of connections there to our, our mental health and our and sort of our overall well-being. Gratitude in general, uh, as far as physical um, pieces, right? There's, there's people, they do a lot of research to see, well, how does it affect you 
you know, physically. And, and we see that people who practice gratitude report that they have fewer physical symptoms of illness. Now, that could be that they actually do have less physical symptoms of illness, or it could also be that they have mind over matter. And even if they have a little pain in the knee or a pain in the neck, they're not talking about it all the time because they're so grateful that they don't have a chronic disease or that they can walk, right? Uh, and so, so we, we see those things. We also see that people tend to uh, be more successful in their goals. So they, when, when they practice gratitude, they uh, create goals that uh, then they are able to act out and be successful in. So they have more positive outcomes on the goals and, and attainment of the goals that they, that they hope to succeed in. Uh, so practicing gratitude lights up the brain's reward center. So if you ever hear those words together, oftentimes we're connecting that to uh, a, a food or some other enjoyment that we have. Uh, and, and that's sort of where dopamine, if you've ever heard of that, um, when we experience joy or we experience excitement or, you know, any of these, you know, uh, winning something or having something that we really enjoy that lights up the reward center and puts dopamine out into our body and it makes us feel good. So there's connections to the level of dopamine that we create and, you know, sort of push through our body uh, when we are aware of what we're grateful for. And, and all of this is very like neurobiological. So I think a lot of times people say, oh, you know, these, these, some of these soft topics are, you know, not that important, but it is important to recognize that emotions uh, are all connected to our physical body, at least on some level. There's many different connections between mind and body. And I think we're just starting to sort of scratch the surface on the research there. But I think over the next 20 years or so, we're probably going to really see how important this you know, optimism, positive thinking, gratitude really is in connection to our physical health overall. So just some facts, um, of course, over the last, you know, four years or since the pandemic, um, more and more people are um, suffering with things like depression and greater experiences of anxiety. Uh, a lot of people report, more than half of people report that they're emotionally exhausted and overwhelmed. These are words we hear all the time. Uh, and, and while you know, gratitude isn't going to address the root cause of those problems. It does show that it can help balance out the experiences that we have from day to day. And it's important to remember that gratitude isn't an emotion um, that, that grounds us necessarily, but it helps us balance our, our lives overall. Um, we experience gratitude when we shift our focus. So what we mean by that is, you know, really thinking about intentionally, right? So there's this whole piece in, you know, psychology talking about intentional thoughts and intentional behavior and intentional choices, because many times we're so stressed, we're doing so much that we just sort of autopilot uh, our lives all day long. And that doesn't allow us necessarily to pause and intend and, and choose how we're going to do whatever it is that we're talking about. Uh, and, you know, so, so there's a whole host of information about that. One of my favorite um, podcasts is called The Hidden Brain. I don't know if anyone has heard of that, but I mean, Shankar Verdantham, I'm probably saying his name wrong, but he does these <clears throat> really neat uh, um, sessions on neurobiology and psychology and sociology and how that's all connected to our health. Um, so if you're ever interested in learning more, he does have one specific to gratitude if, if you're ever interested. But, you know, it's, it's important to understand, uh, you know, that 50 plus or, or even 60 plus percent of people, like we said before, are emotionally exhausted. And so in general, we all need to practice more things like patience and kindness and empathy, because these things at the end of the day are what really get us through life, right? Uh, obviously, a good paycheck and a, and a roof over our head and food on the table are all very important and, and deserve plenty of focus. But at the same time, these other tools and these other um, aspects of our psychology can be really um, imperative to help us feel like we can handle some of the things that might be happening. And, and in general, I think, you know, when, when we talk to people about, you know, what are you worried about or what are you scared of or, or what thing do you fear the most? You know, it's a lot of uncertainty, lack of control, uh, feeling like you, 
um, can't do the things that you want to do. And so anytime that you are able to do that, reminding yourself, oh, I'm really grateful that I was able to do this thing. And just even saying the words can have that um, dopamine effect that, that I was talking about earlier. At the end of the day, most of us are chronically stressed and we live that way, right? It's like we wake up and it's like, okay, my to-do list, my schedule, uh, the, the traffic, the things I have to do, uh, what, what am I going to make for dinner? What am I going to, you know, when do I pick up the kids and who goes to soccer and, you know, all of these kinds of things. And it makes our lives very overwhelming. And, and as with all things well-being, right, stress is probably the number one uh aspect to our lives that really does have a, a very major negative impact on, on, on us on our overall health. So, you know, when we're highly stressed, it makes practicing some of these behaviors really difficult because it's like, I can't be patient with you. I have to hurry. I have to get to a meeting. I have to get to a Zoom call. And so it, it's, it forces us down this path where it makes it more difficult to practice these things. And so, you know, one of the thoughts is, well, if we can if we can, you know, really plan and prepare for our day, then we're better um, able to use some of these tools that can make us feel a little bit better and less emotionally exhausted. So gratitude, of course, matters for a lot of different reasons. And, uh, you know, at, at the core, I would say, you know, we, are, we tend to be pretty riddled with bad news. It's almost like, you know, I say this to my husband all the time. It's like, well, if there wasn't any bad news, then how would all these news networks make their, <laughs> make their money, right? And so it, their goal at the end of the day is to show you all the things that you have to be worried about. And so if you expose yourself to those things a lot, it can really increase your stress and decrease your mental health. And so, you know, practicing some uh, limitations on those things and then also reminding yourself about what is going well and what is working out so that you can like I said before balance it so that it's not sort of this or that um, in general we see that if we when we practice these types of behaviors that we tend to block toxic and negative emotions and then those emotions being blocked or, or at least being lessened help us experience more positivity in our life overall because if you surround yourself with toxic toxic situations and negative people and negative news you tend to gravitate toward those types of things as well and that's sort of what's on your mind all the time and that can of course increase your stress your fear your lack of control and all of these other aspects to what you know makes us mentally unwell overall Okay, so I like you heard me mention stress because that's one of my favorite topics to talk about and I could probably talk about it all day, but I won't do that here. But, you know, understand that stress is a reaction to something, right? So stress is not a thing. It's, it's a reaction to what we call stressors, which are um, things in our life that make us realize that we don't have the resources to do whatever we're trying to do. And so a resource could be time, money, uh, a person, knowledge, all sorts of things. If we don't have those resources, then that can create a sense of stress. And when we have stress day in and day out, it makes us fear uh, or fearful. It makes us very aware of the bad and of the negative, uh, which is what it's supposed to do, right? If we think about human beings 40,000 years ago, stress is what helped us avoid danger and protect our families and fix things before they happened or be aware of what was around us, right? So that's all well and good, but today in 2024 most of us are going to be chased by a lion or have you know uh be living in a forest where we can't find fresh water so you know our our environments have completely changed but our stress response has stayed the same and so learning about what makes us stress and trying to limit some of those experiences and then practicing gratitude, which can help decrease some of those stressors as well. When you put those things together, that can have a really positive impact on your overall physical and mental well-being. Um, we talk about with, with stress in general, you'll hear people say, well, what are your coping mechanisms? And there are thousands of them and different things work for different people. But we do know that when people practice gratefulness or gratitude that they have better coping skills because they are able to sort of balance or displace some of their stress because they 
they know that overall that's a moment in time, but it's not our overarching life. You know, in the moment it feels like this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. But in six weeks or eight weeks or 12 weeks, uh, those things, you know, this too shall pass. And so uh, if we can kind of remember that these are, you know, temporary things, uh, then we can help ourselves feel a little more positive and grateful for our ability to handle it, right? So one of the things I say all the time is I absolutely get stressed. Uh, it's, it's, it can be stressful owning a business and doing, you know, raising kids and doing all the things. But what I, what I think about a lot is that I'm grateful for my ability to handle those moments and that I don't, you know, get analysis paralysis in the same way that some other people do. And I try to sort of remind myself, like, I can do this. It's going to be okay. And, and giving myself those little pep talks. And, and, I'm, and I'm grateful that I know that because that helps me with the level of stress that I experience on a day to day basis. Um, and so those are the kinds of things when you're trying to put this into practice in your own life to think about, you know, when do things go well and why did they go well? And if something doesn't go well, that's okay. What went wrong? And, and you know, making sure that you're really self-aware because that has a lot to do with how, our ability to manage these things. So gratitude could also cause stress. And I like to talk about that just for a minute because um, I, I know that for some people, myself included, it's hard to take a compliment or it's hard for me to, you know, have somebody say, I'm so grateful for you. You know, and, and the research shows that that has, you know, that over 70% of people have that same experience uh, because we feel like we don't deserve the praise or that, uh, you know, maybe praise is embarrassing to us or maybe we connect shame to something that, you know, maybe we didn't get enough praise when we were younger. And so, you know, there's all sorts of different reasons why that might happen. But if you experience that, you are definitely not alone. Uh, and, and so, we have to look at our, our self-worth and our self-esteem and, and understand if maybe we're undervaluing ourselves and our contributions to our environment because all of those things are connected. Uh, and, and again, you know, when we're chronically stressed and we have all of this stuff going on, it can make it really difficult to, to get to, um, you know, self-exploration and, and working through our own vulnerabilities. So how can you start practicing gratitude, right? The first, like I mentioned before, is to really observe what you're thankful for, right? And notice the, the times when you could thank someone or thank yourself for something that went well or something that's happening. We talk a lot about that intentional pause and that um, using intention as part of your life. And so, you know, at the very beginning, having a pause once a day where you can you know, think about what you're feeling and thinking about. And when your instinct tells you to say thanks, do it, right? Uh, and, and, you know, going up and making an intentional effort to say, you know, I'm really thankful for what you did for me today and I just wanted to let you know. Uh, and at, the, at first it might feel weird. It might feel like, you know, I don't know, soft or something like that, but most people will appreciate that experience uh, and even if it's hard for them to hear, it does feel good to everybody. It's a, it's a, it's a, a human um, sort of base feeling, right? And the last thing that you can do is at the end of the day, you can write down three things. Uh, you know, you can say it out loud, you can write it down, you can have a journal, however you like to do it, that, um, that happened that day that you're grateful for. So one of the things we started when our kids were little is um, we do a rose, uh, a rose and a thorn. And, and so every day at dinner, we would sit down and we'd say, well, what was your rose for the day? What was your thing that made you feel really good that went well for you? And what was the one thing that was like you, right? Uh, when they were very little, we did what's best part of your day. But as they got older, we added the thorn piece because it's important for people to learn how to talk about the things that they're not happy about or the things that stress them out or the things that made them angry. And so, you know, all of that emotional development can really help us feel better with our overall mental well-being. So four A's of gratitude, first and foremost, is to understand what you are appreciative of. So... Are you um, appreciative of your ability to walk or your ability to have um, your home or, or any number of other things? 
Uh, the second thing is to have approval and recognize that, um, you know, we at, at some point we have to approve of our ability of, of what we've done. Uh, the third thing is to notice what you admire and what you enjoy. And the fourth thing is really to uh, have attention and be focused and, and using that intentional um, piece. So notice, think. All right. All right. So other ways to practice gratitude uh, include things like acknowledging when things go right or wrong, because again, there are things that are going to go wrong throughout your day. That's normal. And, and, and it's okay to uh, be aware of that. Uh, so you can acknowledge those things. Respect uh, overall, of course, is important. Uh, having grace and praise are all different uh, pieces that we can have that can help us feel better overall. Um, and then, you know, the recognition and responsiveness. I think a lot of times we are punitive with our actions, um, particularly as parents. I think we do that a lot. And sometimes even as managers or leaders in the workplace and, and recognizing people's effort, even if the outcome isn't what you expected, it's the effort that we can recognize and, and of ourselves as well. It's like, you know, maybe I didn't get my sales goal or maybe I didn't finish you know, the 18 things I wanted to on my to-do list. But instead of making that my center focus, I want to recognize and be aware of the things that uh, did go well and, and say, you know, Michelle, you did, you did the best you could and you did it, you, you did it as well as you could. And then, and, and that effort is what matters, right? So some things you can try um, first is think of one thing or person you're grateful for when you wake up in the morning and before you go to sleep at night. One of the activities that I really like to do is when I when I wake up, I'll say something like, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, what's one, you know, what, what made this day successful? What are three things that made this day successful? Um, the next thing you can do is take the 10 deliberate breaths. So we talk a lot about um, the importance of taking a moment, breathing, and really just sort of recentering ourselves. Because when we, can, when we can have control over our body and over our mind through that, that is a, is a blessing in, in many ways, right? So, you know, taking a moment, taking a breath, those things help reduce our stress and can have a really good positive impact on our vagus nerve and how our brain functions. Um, so, you know, trying to be intentional with our breathing. Find one thing that you're grateful for about your job or what you do every day, maybe as a parent or maybe as a manager or a, a, a daughter or a sister or a, a husband, whatever the case is. And then lastly, um, really connecting to nature. So they talk a lot about how, you know, grounding and, and touching grass, right? And, and being outside and taking a walk and having the breeze you know, come on our skin and the sun shining, et cetera. Uh, and while we're experiencing that, uh, being grateful for the environment that we happen to have around us. So other couple of things that you could do, um, writing thank you notes. Of course, we're all on posting and emails and text now, but I think there's a lot of value to actually writing a thank you note. Um, people love getting those in the mail. I don't know about you, but when I open my mailbox, it's all, you know, advertisements and marketing flyers and a bunch of stuff that I'm going to put right in my recycling bin. And, and so if I get a letter or a card in the mail, I'm like, that is really nice. I really appreciate that. Uh, and, and that, you know, means a lot to people. So taking that moment when you write the thank you note, it practices gratitude from, you know, internally. And when the person receives it, that gives them that external gratitude. Um, thanking someone mentally. So if you if you don't have time to write one of these letters, you know, you can just mentally say, you know, I'm really thankful for my team today. They did such a good job. Um, and maybe sending them a quick text or, or you know, doing something like that. Um, keeping that gratitude journal, there's a lot of support for that and it's and our mental health over what, overall, where we can count our blessings and we can be aware of the things that we're grateful for. And then we can go back and look at it. So sometimes that can be really helpful for people. 
So if you're looking for some journal prompts, uh, these are some good ones here. I'm not going to read the list, um, but you know, if you have, if you're struggling to get started and it's something you really want to get involved in, these are some great kind of prompts that you could you know write at the top of the page, and then you can write down whatever it is that you want to write down from there. Be as specific as possible when you do your gratitude journal because the more you, the more detail you give the better uh, the outcomes, right? So I could say I'm grateful for my coworkers or I could say I'm grateful that my coworkers brought me soup when I was sick on Tuesday because it, it, it attaches who you're grateful for and why you're grateful. So the who and the why together. Um, go for depth over breadth so, um, or breadth. So uh, elaborate in detail, get as personal as you can, focusing on the people. Um, you know, being grateful for some of the things that you might have avoided or escaped or prevented. I mean, those are all things to be grateful for as well. Um, I avoided traffic today or I avoided a car accident or any number of other things. Um, surprises are nice. Uh, and then, you know, just trying to not overdo it and not overcommit. Like, you know, if you start a gratitude journal, journal not saying to yourself, I'm going to do this every single day because sometimes we won't do it every day, but I'm going to do it when I have a moment or when I feel like being intentional. There's also a lot of gratitude meditations that you can look up on YouTube. I have one here, but there are plenty. So if you're ever needing uh, some external uh, 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 support system or resource, those are uh, readily available on YouTube. These are just some resources that um, Purdue, TED Talks, and, and there's books about gratitude. So you can go on to um, Google and type in TED Talks about gratitude. There are probably about at least 30 or 40 of them, and I think they're all great. So it just sort of depends on what you like to listen to. So that's all I have for today. I hope everybody enjoyed the session. Thank you so much for joining us, and I hope to see you again soon. Take care.